Our society is full of people who come from different nations, practice different religions, and embrace different cultures. With it comes a remarkable melting pot, but unfortunately also a space for discrimination, stereotypes, and racism. Our group today is focused on the issues of Arab and other Middle Eastern Americans. Most of us don't know anything about Middle Eastern Americans or other cultures. This lack of knowledge hurts our ability to understand world events and consequently our ability to hold intelligent opinions about those events. The total population of Middle, Middle Eastern Americans is 936,656. That's 4% of U.S. population. 82% of Middle Eastern Americans are U.S. citizens. With 63% born in the U.S. These states with significant Middle Eastern population are California, Florida, Virginia, New York, Washington, D.C. The largest Middle Eastern American community in the United States is in Los Angeles and Southern California. And that's where we are right now. <laughs> this diverse and vibrant group cuts across religions. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, <laughs> nationalities and ethnicities. Afghans, Iranians, Syrian, Arabs, Lebanese, <laughs> Egyptians. People from Iran are, are also known as Persians and they are not Arabs. Arabs are part of an ethnic group, not on religion. Islam is a religion, a Muslim is someone who follows the religion. So, you wouldn't say someone follows Muslim or is an Islam? Just as you wouldn't say someone who follows Christian or is a Christianity. When American children hear the word Arab, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Perhaps the imagery of Arabian Nights from Aladdin. Yet, yeah, Arab Americans have problems with this movie. Well, it is charming and artistically impressive. And it's one of the few American uh, films to feature an Arab for a hero. But a closer look at it reveals disturbing features. This was a hard to find original version to the opening of Aladdin. Pay attention to the lyrics, for they stereotype the Arab world. Oh, I come from a land, from a faraway place, where a caravan camels go. Where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. When the, the film immediately characterizes the Arab world as alien or exotic. Arab Americans raise in protests against Aladdin. For example, the American Arab Discrimination Committee, the ADC, has persuaded Disney to change the phrase lyrics. But it is an important improvement there are still some problems. Disney is by no means the only offender. Popular culture aimed at children with negative images of Arab women as harem girls and belly dancers and Arab men as violent terrorists and oil shakes. Just all of a sudden, scan her. Just feel I have to scan her, though. 
racist. Racist BS. Racist BS. Alright, let's go the very back. There's no need for this. What is this? Oh, that's my cell phone. Is it a device for a bomb? No way! It's my cell phone. How am I supposed to make calls when I go to Hawaii with my wife? It looks like a cell phone. A, a, a bomb! You are one racist security guard, you know that. That is not a bomb. It's a cell phone. Well... I have to help you. No, you, you can't keep it. I have to confiscate this. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Why? Because it's a law. It looks like a bomb. There's a remote for a bomb. Take a bit. Come on, honey. Take a bit. I just got her head. Oh my god! <laughs> Very professional, man. The big full part. As you can see, our small skit demonstrates an act of discrimination against a Middle Eastern American woman. Although several passengers entered the airport just by their documents, the ruthless security guard had to search endlessly her bags and her clothes. He even took away a device because he thought it was a bomb based on a stereotype. Although this skit wasn't an accurate scene at the airport, it was something we were trying to base our point across. I'm half Persian, half Polish. And what religion do you practice? Islam. Currently, I don't have a religion. Um, I would say that I'll probably be Christian later on in my life. Um, you were born in? Uh, United Arab Emirates. I was born here in Pendale, California. And how was like early life there? Um, early life was really simple. You always had your parents guiding you with everything to do and it was mostly revol revolved around the Islamic religion like you would always have close family ties cook together, eat together, go out together and focus more on your family and relatives I was spoiled, I, I was the only child so I had pretty much everything I wanted when I was a kid but later on, no So what language do you speak? We speak Farsi uh, we're not Arabs. Persians are not Arabs. It's a whole different language. Rang looks similar. We might look alike, but it's a whole different ethnicity. Cool. What type of um, like dishes, food, like in your culture? What do you guys eat? We eat chilla kebab, a mixture of a lot of rice and kebab is made thick and they're so good. We usually eat like fried tomatoes. <laughs> really good too. Um, we eat a lot of like also green foods. The one called Gourmet Savage is really good. Check it out sometime. Cool. So, so you work at Best Buy? Yes, I do. Part time, going to school. You know. Also, another thing is funny because people think that when you're Persian, you're always rich. <laughs> oil fields or whatever. Yeah, right? oil. Not me, no. I have a Chevy, not a Benz. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Kelly Fowl. Good night.